All right. So welcome everybody to Rest Rounds with Eric and Adam. Hi, Adam. Hi, Eric. Well, thank you for he's you know why he's doing that is because I have my tournament tomorrow and he knows that I'm sensitive and I'm feeling the feelings. So he's like, hey, guy, How's how are you doing? You are right, buddy? Yeah, I'm, you... I'm, I'm, I'm OK, Adam. Thank you. I, Good. I wasn't Here emotional you. until yeah. you. Oh, I got to get through this. OK, this is tournament talks and the tournament will potentially lead into a conversation I wanted to talk about, which is finding success in the mess. Not that this tournament is a mess, but every time we open up ourselves to a new challenge, a new situation, we are open to the possibility of it being a disaster, quote unquote, mm -hmm. because we catastrophize things. So leading up to this tournament, I leave after we record this, I'm getting in the car, driving to Chicago, staying in a hotel tonight, and then tomorrow morning weigh-ins. You know, so it's like all these mini battles. So there's packing. Do I have everything I need? Did I give myself the good nutrition this whole week? Uh, am I going to be on weight? You know, because I'm, I'm at right now 188.3. And if I hit mm. 190, I go into the next weight division, which usually is a disqualification. But I got a note saying if you do go over, you're just in that weight class, which is it's smart because we're white belts. So it's not yeah. like they're, if I'm a black belt, maybe I could see that because it's a very, you know, strict rule set, but this is like yeah. some beginners who just want to try. So I was really happy to find out that there's a little bit of grace there. Well, that was a fun $140 to just drive to Chicago and spend the night in a hotel and come home ashamed of my family. Right. Thanks yeah. Naga. So, so help me understand, help, help me as a newbie understand this weigh-ins. So you mm -hmm. are. So you're driving down there to do comedy night with the Wayans brothers or what, what is this Wayans thing? <laughs> a lot of laughter, I'm sure. On yeah. the mats. <laughs> no, but in, in high school, the one season in wrestling I did, I, I weighed in there too. So I'm familiar with the process, which again was JV. So mm. if I didn't hit weight, it was like, okay, you're doing 130 tonight instead of 125. So it's kind of that same energy, but you, as a, beginner in my mind it's like I w my guys in my gym were telling me like don't like stress out because in your mind i don't know about you but for me in my mind i'm a white belt a beginner that's my class classification in no gi and gi for this jujitsu tournament mm -hmm. but everyone i'm going against is a trained killer is an assassin and that's what they said like hey dude they're not assassins they're not killers they're like you they're just, I mean, we're 30, 30 to 39 year old men yeah, who are just right. trying to be active. So it's not like the next greatest fighter in the world is going to meet me on the mat and just wreck me. Hmm. And I'm like, maybe I'm that guy. Yeah, maybe I, I can be are. the assassin. And so then you I get are. that in my head. And, and that's also damaging because I haven't even gotten to Chicago yet. So right. all of these stories in our head create this cacophony of, of noise and we haven't even gotten to the event yet. And then I'm like, what if I don't weigh in right? And I miss that. I oversleep my, you know, go through my alarm. And I don't know if that's just anxiety that lives in, in me, but I think some people are like, dude, it's not that big a deal to show up, you know, but I'm like, no, 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 I have to make it there. And I'm like really high strung. Yeah. And I think it's just excitement. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just really excited to get there and do it. I know when I, I was, uh, was it on Monday? I went to, to training nervous, like the, really the worst nerves I felt in a long time. And I got to the mats and trained. And as soon as I stepped on the mats, everything just, oh, it fell off and I was calm because mm -hmm. I was there and we did the thing. And I've been calm ever since until today, because now I'm going to the next thing and it's the unknown yeah. and it's always that and iron man and karate and jujitsu is always the same thing my kids going to somewhere new is always the unknown and not the actual thing and once yep. you get into it it's okay yep and that's how you know you're in the right place you know you're in the right place when you get into the thing and it's okay but I, i'll tell you anybody that that walks into these things or gives the really really terrible advice of well just do the thing just go into the ring and do it uh, you know, why be nervous? Why worry? First of all, a if they don't if they're not experiencing that, they're liars or they're psychopaths. Because <laughs> fear and and nervousness and and excitement and at that energy are normal emotions. They're supposed to be felt. When you just turn that into focus and you harness it, it is you know what it is, and and feel it as part of the experience. So knowing that you're nervous, that's part of the joy. That's part of the fun and the experience of the, of the whole thing. I, I saw this on Instagram by this jujitsu account and they were talking about the four things you need to do as 
uh, practitioner. And I think this applies to any kind of physical activity. Iron Man, I apply it to this too, uh, because I've experienced it. And it was, you know, train really hard and see what happens when you go out and you you have victory. Uh, Then you also need to train really hard and go out and experience great defeat. And you also have to not train really hard and then experience victory to realize, you know, that you actually do have a lot just on your base level without preparation, you are capable of something. And then don't prepare, under prepare, go out and get smashed. Yeah. So you can learn humility. So you do have to prepare. So it's like experiencing all of these different things. I think is important and it's just when we over emphasize the fact that we're going out there to be the guy who's underprepared mm-hmm. and dominates competition, that's the danger or the yeah. discomfort because I just don't know loss yet. I don't I mean I know loss but not in this this arena. Right, right. And and that's one of the what those that is one of the important lessons. I mean it's 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 like you go out there and you want to do your very best. You want to win, you want to you want to succeed. And the biggest you know, whether it's a catch 22 or paradox or whatever, cause I'm not, uh, you know, this is a, this is a martial arts show. This is not a, a language show. So take that for the spirit, spirit, which is intended. But that, 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 that thing there is, is the fact that without loss, without the risk of losing something or, or finishing in dead last, there's no, you know, there's no glory of first place. There's, and, and there's no lessons learned. So, you have to go in with the attitude of just knowing that there's that there's that there's a victory in in either situation as long as you again go into the ring and you and you and you just throw down and you do your very best and and take the lessons you learned from it yeah that's really getting into this idea of going into it what are you focusing on yeah. and so if you focus on the negative it it suffocates quite literally anything that is positive, anything positive that could happen. And that's what my mind keeps going to is if I focus on every negative thing that can happen, if I focus on getting last and, you know, embarrassing myself and getting beat in 10 seconds or like all of these things that could be really negative, uh, getting dizzy because I don't have enough hydration or because I get dehydrated or I get a sore stomach, upset stomach because I brought uh, uncrustables instead of bananas or what, whatever food is going to be good for my belly. It's all new. If I focus on all the negative things that can happen and, you know, might happen, I don't go into it with any feelings of the positivity. Or mm-hmm. if I do, like I've said, that positivity is so small and the failure risk is so great that that positivity is like nothing, but that is everything. It's, it's the thing that's the small little light in a very potentially dark cave. And I've, I've been in those dark caves. I know we've all been in those dark caves where everything just seemed to go wrong and it's really hard to find what went right. But that right is the light that allows you to walk back out of the cave and try again. Mm -hmm. And so my right now, my my right right now, <laughs> that was really hard for me to process in my head. Uh, yeah. My what is right for me right now is to focus on I'm doing it. There's no backing out. There is no expectation, even though there is. I'm going into win. Mm. I also recognize I might not, but I'm not entertaining that thought. Right. I'm not preparing myself to lose. And what I'm going to do when I'm sad. I'm preparing myself. I'm visualizing myself many times standing on the podium with the gold medal in both divisions. I'm seeing my hand, you know, raised after the, all six matches or however many I'm going to have. I'm seeing how it's done. I've talked to my coaches. I'm not going to reveal technique and strategy because I don't want you to know my game, even though this is going to come out after the tournament's done. So I guess I could tell you and I wouldn't be spoiling anything. But Unless I know you change how, your strategy. That's and right. Then, yeah. Then and I didn't do it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's what it really is. Is I'm just but you say that you meant to do it. Yeah, then. <laughs> I was tricking myself. Right. So I, I know the I know the takedown I want to do. I know what position I need to get into. I know how I'm going to get there. But honestly, everything can go to shit mm-hmm. the second we slap hands, because yeah. that person might power double me, or 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 sprawl when I'm going for a single. If I go for a single, and then all of a sudden it's all bets are off. But you have to have that plan. And so I'm just focusing on the plan. Maybe that's the positivity is it's, there's no point in me preparing for failure when I need to spend time just seeing my plan, running those moves, imagining those moves, imagining me being successful doing those moves. And up until this point, I've never believed that was a real benefit. I never looked at myself in Iron Man and was like, I see myself somehow miraculously getting an eight hour 
you know, whatever time, you know, for the course yeah. or a four hour bike, you know, split, which you also have to be realistic. If I yeah. was going against black belts or in the absolute division or something, I'd have to be more realistic, but I'm going against people my skill level. So yeah. I can imagine me beating them on a one on one situation. Yeah, absolutely. And so the, so that is in the realm of possible. And that's exactly where <clears throat> the most powerful goals live is in that realm of of possible, but beyond your comfort zone beyond. So so that's you're in that sweet spot, my brother. Where um, uh, I'm sorry, I got into like wrestling, Macho brother. Man. Brother. You're in the sweet yeah, spot, brother. brother. <laughs> this is real. That's where. Yeah, one day we're gonna do a, an episode just talking as if Macho Man is talking to Hulk Hogan. You know? Yeah. Oh gosh! Then we have to I just hit my knee against the <laughs> coffee table. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we have to take two weeks off just so we can talk again. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but. That's that's the sweet spot of where your goals are. So yeah, that visualization practice you're doing right there is is perfect. So what? Uh, so let's walk through. I, I'd love to walk through what your expectations are for tomorrow because you want to win. You want to go in and win. Mm -hmm. So what what does that what does that look like? So for the my success is the answer to my childhood wound, which is I control how this thing goes. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who says what openings are and aren't available to you for you to hurt me. Yeah. That that's a that's an interesting perspective and you got into, you know, a deep part there which is which is, you know, uh which is addressing that childhood wound. So you, it's almost like the 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 victory looks like being in control to that level that you didn't feel like you as you were a child. Yeah. yeah. That's 100%. Great. That was a long yeah. way to say it I suppose, but that's the that is my success is I was in control. That's a lot of, yeah, that's a lot of clarity, my man. So fantastic. Yeah. And that's the, the beauty of the, the physical realm. Like that's what the show is about. Like I, I as it goes on, we're going to talk a lot more about martial arts. Mm -hmm. We're in a position where I'm new. So it's five months. I think it'll be almost six months tomorrow. Yeah. On the 17th, it'll be six months. So that's not a lot of time to have this proficiency and expertise. It's just about my journey so far in connection to it. So there's a lot of Iron Man talk. There's a lot of other things I've done in the army that are physical, but it's really about how your physicality unlocks your story and allows mm -hmm. you to write a more empowered one. And when you find your whys, they're often connected to things in childhood that you wish were different. And, you know, I don't know what yours are in karate or whatever, you know, what that answer is for you, but I'd be curious if there's any clarity you've gotten through your Again, we're both new in this, but not new to physicality necessarily. But has there been any things like that have gotten clarity? If not, like that, I it's putting you on the spot. I realize. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's it's it absolutely has. You're you're right, and I mean, I think that you know, as you're saying that, and as you as you talk about that, I've never been much of a fighter. I never have. I've always wanted to get into martial arts because I thought it was I thought it was really cool. I thought it was you know, it tapped into the creative and artistic side of me. And it, and and what I've found in doing it, because I've been in the, I've I've been doing karate for about uh, about a year now, um, maybe a little little more, and uh, and in that time, you know, it I, I've I've seen that the confidence has come out because now all of a sudden I've turned something that used to be a fear of a fear of inherent fear of getting punched in the face, but also just fears of of just like how other people feel about me. Like come to the surface, even as we're sparring now, and I don't know if you get this in jujitsu, but like as we're sparring now, and you know we're we're punching at people, I still find myself after a year of doing it, like you know, like uh, just not wanting to connect or feeling like I I will somehow piss somebody mm -hmm. off if I mm -hmm. if I punch them or while it's sparring, but meanwhile while I get in the pit punched in the face, I'm almost like, Oh, I'm sorry about that. Sorry. My face got in the way of your fist. I still feel that way. Yeah. So I have this really, really inherent, like people pleasing gene that comes in that, that, that comes from my childhood. And that comes from a sense of, of, uh, everything that I do, um, you know, is driven by a fear of feeling shame. I don't want to feel shame. And that comes from a lot of stuff that, you know, was going on in my life as it, uh, in my young, younger days. And well into adulthood where it was just like, I don't want to feel shame. So I do everything I can to avoid it. That includes trying to please people so that they don't get upset with me or disappointed or force me to feel that shame. So, so this, so, so the idea of, of karate though is, is now helping me in a, in a respectful and safe way to break that, break that frame. 
Um, and, and there's a long way to go for me with the, the fighting and the sparring aspect. I, you know, for example, we had a competition earlier last weekend and I got dead last in the sparring competition. And a lot of that was, was because I was holding back. I mean, it wasn't because of lack of technique. It was because I was holding, I was holding back and I had my back turned to the judge, which is never a good thing. Either, so <laughs> can't see you hit. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> You're scoring this judge. Yeah. Yeah. Do you didn't see me uh, totally nail this guy in the chest? No. Oh. no. Yeah. Well, that's, there is some of, I mean, obviously we don't hit, I mean, there's combat jujitsu where you can open palm strike, yeah. but you do make contact because you're switching right. for a move and I, you know, you get hit, you get need, whatever, like, and you, as you're doing it, it's, it's adorable. Cause you're like, Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. And you're like actively trying to murder each other, but uh, my yeah. apologies. Good, sir. It's yeah. a weird environment. And then at the tournament, there's, you know how uh, you go to a, a go-kart track and they have a governor on the engine. Yep. Yeah. It's like practice. And then you take that governor off and that's where damage can really occur. Like that governor yeah. was safety. And now you're going full throttle. And I still don't know how full throttle I want to go because we're, like I said, I saw a meme that said, it showed us this guy's knee getting bent all the way over. And it said, grown a 39 year old, 40 year old men for a $5 gold medal. Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> like, like I understand that the, the, there's a cognitive dissonance here where it says the result of winning a first place medal as a 39 year old man in the master's division as a white belt is not feeding my family. It is not feeding, you know, myself. It is, it is just an experience. It's still a matter of how aggressive do I want to get to achieve my goal or how, yeah. how aggressive do I need to? So yeah. where is that governor that I'm going to put on myself? Yeah, and there, that's interesting because in, yeah, in in karate, I'm I'm in what's called the the uh, the the blue and purple belt range, which is uh, the purple and blue belt range, which is the bruiser division, really, because we're just learning how to how to make contact uh, safely, you know, with other people. Like black belts, you know, you could you could punch toward the face, even make a little contact in the face, and it it's not painful. It's it's just the right amount. Um, but as our division, I mean, I faced up against people that have just been like, geez, man, hold back. They're uh, crazy. But, you know, <laughs> but the, the, then there's others that like, you know, like myself, I tend towards the other way, like where it's like, I don't want to make too much contact. But so so within within the realm of jujitsu, um, I know everybody listening, this is probably gonna be a, like you already know this, but for for winning in a competition, is it is it taking down and pinning or is it is it tapping out? What What does it look like? Yeah, there's two ways to, well, I mean, there's probably, there's disqualifications too, but the sure. traditional ways of winning is on points. So you get like two points for a takedown, which is you take them down and maintain control for two or three seconds. There's also uh, different positional points. So if you get to knee on belly or to a mount position, or you take their back, you're getting points. So you could technically get like six points in one takedown. If you land a certain way and do it a certain sequence mm -hmm. in five seconds or whatever. I don't know all that because I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm new. So it is kind of confusing in wrestling high school. It was the same system, but slightly, yeah. I think easier for me to understand, yeah. but you have points. You also have, if it's a tie, you have advantage. So as you're in positions, you're, I don't know if they time it or how they do it, but the judges, it'll go to the judges and they'll decide you had more advantage points because you had more dominant control. You also can get points depending on the organization. If you're going for a submission and get close, you'll get points for that sometimes. Uh, but then submissions will end it. Like that's a guaranteed victory. So you're yeah. some people like my coach said, because I don't have a lot of submissions and I'm kind of wrestling for points. And if I get in the position and I cook the opponent long enough and, and I have the opening, I can go for the, the submission. And, mm -hmm. you know, I would, conserve energy by doing that that would be great but yeah so those are the two ways by points or by submission mm -hmm. is the two main ways to win gotcha okay interesting yeah yeah and everyone's different like every like i said there's i'm doing naga which is north american grappling association yeah. uh, and then there's you know the ibjjf and that's that's what the real big show so to speak the real traditional the big I, believe show. They, yeah. I believe they speak portuguese at those events oh, so really? oh, wow. i would be in trouble you know, yeah. where they'd like start in this position. I'm like, which one? And this like, Kaba -taba. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh no, I don't know what that means. Man, your Portuguese is nailed it's, it. Though. I know. Thank you, <laughs> Roberto. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> He's our Brazilian, our mutual Brazilian friend. But then there's also um, grappling industries, and there's a lot of different organizations. Each one has a different rule set. So I don't get too into the weeds there in, in white belt. I'm just like, wrestle 
submit yeah. play to your strengths yeah <laughs> always always play to your strengths so and um and do everything in full view of the judges that's yeah. my my uh that's my takeaway from from, from last week it sounds so. like it yeah <laughs> but then i there's also there's a, i think there's also a rule that if uh if you audibly whine oh or like that, the ref can stop it. So it's not a tap, but you're like, ow. Oh, really? <laughs> and they, oh, wow. they have like the authority to stop it because you're not tapping and to protect the, the person. <laughs> I wouldn't mind submitting someone with a squeal. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. All you got to do is grab them in the right spot. Just a yeah. little quick tickle under the, under the armpit. Maybe mm-hmm. if you're feeling a little bit more frisky, you could go somewhere else. But yes, uh, you know, I, saw, to you. I saw a, uh, a sculpture from Rome from the early days of the Olympics with naked wrestling. And it was mm-hmm. literally a guy who was picking up another competitor to slam him, but his yeah. fist was grabbing a certain rope. Okay. If you know what I'm saying? And, okay. tugging. and I'm like, that's a very effective. Was it one maneuver. of his fingers or something toes? more, something with more girth. Hmm. Like his hair, like he had a ponytail or it, something. It, along it, it those had lines? hair. It Maybe had a hair. nose or okay. His <laughs> nose has hair. <laughs> I've got your nose. That's a creepy <laughs> uncle. <laughs> oh man. Um, so, so I guess it's a tangential question. Why did they do, why, why was wrestling naked in, in, in the Greek days? Just uh, I have a curiosity. I have a couple of theories. One mm-hmm. of them difficulty, they would put them like in olive oil. And so there would be like this religious ah, aspect of it. And they would okay. shave. I think, I think they would shave all the body hair because their gods yeah, they were, were yeah. uh, naked and, and <laughs> right. Which is the sign of youth, which is kind of weird. But anyway, the other thing, and it's, I see it in current tribes today. Like if you go to an, an African tribe where they're still doing the rites of passage and traditional life of hunter and gatherer and all that, mm-hmm. uh, they often will parade to the yearly combat where they have tribes get together and have ritual combat, which is safer, but still pretty damn bloody and dangerous. Sure. Uh, they're naked and they do yeah. like a parade and all of the women are there cheering and watching and and there's almost this element of them being like livestock and the women viewing who is the most virile man who wins the contest. And also they're, I think, sizing up the, the, the body in full display. Like that's going to be, that's going to make strong children or, you know, whatever. So there's an element of that, that I find from a practical standpoint, you're almost like a bull and you're, the women are the farmers who are saying, yes, look at that one. Ooh, that one is a, a warrior, a true stallion, you know, yeah. just like at a horse race or something like that. That's just my guess. I have no scientific or <laughs> archaeological, sociological evidence to back that up. It's just my my meandering thoughts after watching a show. Sure. <laughs> like yeah. Netflix. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess I guess those are those are as good a guess as any, uh, because I, yeah, I, I always just get curious. I, I always get curious of the stories behind things like like, yeah, it, we're you know, some Greek folks were getting bored and they're like, Hey, you know, what would be fun. Let's wrestle. Okay. Close off everybody. Let's do it. Whoa. It's like, wait, hung on that. That escalated quickly. Very quickly. Well, yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. You... You're right. Let's oil up first. Um, Jeez for McKees. <laughs> Can't bring him to a party. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So I take, I take it into the wrong, wrong directions uh, yeah. really quickly. Yeah. But now we put on geese to really cover up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which, um, very, very, I, I, I'm finding when I'm wearing the 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 gi, um, you know, I I love the sound it makes when you when you when you do moves. Mm, very you crisp. Know, it it does. It it adds that that karate element to it. It's very nice. Yeah, jujitsu. You get you get a uh, gi burn, so you get like these, not rashes, but you get because it's they're not gent they're not soft. Yeah, you know, so it's yeah. like this honeycomb kind of pattern. And it, it abrases your skin and. So there's a nice little gi burn yeah. for good for the skin yeah. to, to, to promote new growth. To Isn't that a city in Switzerland too, right? Uh, gi burn? <laughs> <laughs> it's in gi burn Switzerland. Oh, gi burn Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to the next point. I think, yes. that's more, I think that's more horrible Norwegian accent that I'm – no, it's I've scored you already. I can't remember how – I never could do the uh, Swedish chef voice. Oh, good argument. <laughs> Oh my God! You speak Swedish. I got a hamburger, gigger, bigger, We're doing Portuguese and Swedish. Yes, that's right. Very Who are we going to offend next? Well, 
I don't know, but I can't wait to find out. And you'll find out in the next segment uh, called where is the mess in your life and how do you grow from it? Uh, so let's just say this. It's in, this it's in Canada. It's in Canada. It's Canada. You've seen the news. Actually, I haven't because I try to avoid that. And it just made me happier, honestly, yeah. because you expose yourself to so much mess in your life. And then you go to the news and it's like, hey, here's worldwide mess. Yeah, this is so it's like, oh, great. Just everything is terrible. Fantastic. How am I supposed to find one good thing? Like the odds are stacked up against me. The villain is too large. So there's nothing I can actually do to make any meaning in my life. So I take this this task very seriously uh, to be miserable. Yes. And I find ways to be miserable and helpless. So I have no accountability in my life, no ownership. And one of our values is ownership on this show. And the reason it is, is because if I take my life and the mess it is or isn't, it's not related to my life compared to Adam's life or how Adam views my life or how this person views my life or it's my life. And I define what the mess is, how traumatic it is, because it's my connection to it. But no matter what the situation is, it is my responsibility to deal with the mess in my life, the mess in my head. It's nobody else's responsibility. And I don't have to justify it to anybody. I just have to take empowered steps. So when yep. people tell me that I'm weak and a product of a weak society, which they do, I say, okay, I'm on a journey. I'm trying to make myself better every day. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're probably not. Yeah, but I'm walking my path. I'm I can't deal with your stuff. Uh, I have people that I help that come to me and they ask for help, and and I hold space with those people. And does it make a difference? No clue. That's their that's their journey. But I'm showing up the way I can. And so in my life, that's what I do: is I I look at the mess and I find the one thing, you know. And it's from practicing and feeling like I don't know the moves. But hey. When we were doing this, I moved my foot back because I knew it was in danger. And as soon as I did that, he swiped to try to grab it. That didn't happen three months ago. I wasn't aware. I, I didn't think I could do it. And now my body is reacting. So that means I'm internalizing the lessons. And without thought, I am doing something I wasn't doing before I started. And even if I get beat I made progress and I get really excited about that progress because it means there's hope. If there's progress, there is hope. If there's stagnation, it's because you're not finding the one tiny little pebble of growth, the one positive out of this whole experience. I don't care for me if it is just the fact that I signed up and went to the tournament and showed up when my mind said, dude, maybe you can just call in sick. It's okay. getting a little bit freaky. Oh, yeah. dude, it's not that big a deal. It's just a tournament. Like, no, it's my experience, my emotional connection to it. And I'm trying to deal with that and I'm going to go there, but I'm feeling feelings about it. And that's my experience. And I'm going to honor myself because I'm doing this. And when I win, amazing. Yeah. If I lose, I'm going to find something from every single match that I did well. Yeah. Find the winner in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and, and entering the ring too is a victory in and of itself, especially going back to that piece of, of, you know, overcoming that, that childhood wound. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Find the success in the mess. If yes. I lose and I, I reverse the position, he gets me on the ground and I'm in his guard or he's in my guard and I, I sweep him and I'm on top now. And that's the only good thing I do in that whole match. You better believe I'm going to be happy because I, I was yeah. confident in the move set and I executed what I wanted to do in that moment. That is success. It might yeah. be small, to someone else, but to me, it's going to be a big deal. And I hope to find all kinds of success. I, I love finding it, yep. but I just know I don't always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not, it, it won't be perfect, but I'm going to tell you, you are in the best position right now based on the work that you've done and the consistency mm -hmm. you've shown and the points of reference that you have in your life for success, that uh, you are in the best position to, to win, to be a winner mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, to, to achieve those goals. And so I believe in you, Eric Beach, and I believe in your in your your abilities to achieve your goals tomorrow, and and uh, and find and and maintain that control you're looking for, and you'll control mm -hmm. the controllables. You'll find the best options for those things that that go out of your control or the things that change, and uh, and you've been visualizing it, and you have such a clear vision for tomorrow. I think you're going to do great, man. Thank you. I yeah. feel it. It's the first time I've really felt it. You know, like I think you. Going into when I went to Ironman, you always have that kind of hope and belief, and you get the nerves on the day, and and then the race goes the way it goes, and it's 
very unexpected that I didn't win when I didn't even put the work in. Right. Like, right. no, and I was, ex- I expected not to. Yeah. And actually I, I did pretty good on a couple of half iron mans where I didn't put the work in and I did pretty good. And so that was amazing, but uh, you can't apply that to the iron man. Yeah. Or so how are, yeah. So how are the nerves compared to an iron man before an iron man race? Is it, is it similar? Are you going to be sleeping tonight? What, what's that look like? We'll find out tonight. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it's different. It is very different. I, I, I didn't feel it until the night before when it was iron man. And I think honestly, it's related to two things. One iron man was a, Hey, can my body do this? Can yeah. I physically exert myself for 15, 16 hours for me? Uh, this is, and, oh, and, and the other fact of I'm not going to win. Mm-hmm. That's off the table. You know, I'm just trying to finish. Yeah. This is like, I'm trying to win. And so that's added a new level for the first time in my life. Even at wrestling tournaments, I had no expectation of winning. So it was just kind of, uh, you know, stressful, but I had my friends and my team. Mm-hmm. But this is like, I've evolved. I've grown. Like you said, I'm ready. I can do it. This is the first time I believe I can do it. And that has added new complexity. And, and I think that's the reality of no matter how evolved any of us get, there's going to be something that throws us off our game. Yeah. There's going to be something that adds mess to what should be a really confident situation. And that's, I think, good because I, I do want those nerves. It's just I've limited them to two days. One was, you know, Sunday and Mon- or Monday morning. That that whole morning, I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. This is, what am I doing, you know? Got to practice, calm. Mm-hmm. And then it was good until today. And I'm like, oh, man. There's there's the weight way in. Like, I'm 188.3, and I got to be mm-hmm. 190 or below. But I was up at 193. And so I'm like, what did I do? You know, and then you're getting in your head about, like, stupid weight stuff. Yeah. It's three pounds, you know, and it's it's – like I ate some salty food and it was water weight, whatever. So just stay what you've been doing. And it's just unnecessary stress because I thought I would be disqualified. And then I found out it didn't matter. I would just be in a bigger weight class. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you know, that's as long as that's the case and I'm cool. So there's all these different levels of nerves mm-hmm. that it's, it's not like an iron man. Oh, you're 160 pounds. Yeah. The cutoff for you was in your age group was one, one, one fifty nine. Sorry. Yeah. You know, that's, as long as you're the same age as you said you were, you're good to go. So there's differences in requirements that I don't necessarily love, but I do understand Mm -hmm. why the weight classes are there. I just overly stress myself because I wanted to fit in the one eighties and that's like a whole dangerous thing. It can be nerves are feeling okay right now. Talking to you, they've calmed before the call. I was really nervous. It was building and building as I'm packing. And as soon as I get off of this episode, I'm packing the car and going. And yeah. it's probably going to hit me the first 10 minutes of the drive. And then I'm going to listen to music and try to vibe and zone out and, and just enjoy and get to the hotel and be nervous, get in my room, sit on the bed and just look at the wall yeah. for a little while and just be like, oh, okay, I'm here. And then so you're gonna we'll listen, see what. You're going to listen to some Gordon Lightfoot on the way or oh, yeah, some, John, um, some um, you know, uh, Neil Diamond it's kind of oh, things. Like, yeah. yeah. Come into America. See, today. <laughs> That's, I mean, for sure, dude. Yeah, no absolutely. metal whatsoever. Right. No, def- definitely not. You want some Gordon Lightfoot yeah. or some um, uh, Karen Carpenter. She's, Ooh, she's yes. my jam. Yes. and uh, One of the best vibratos in the business. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to say, I mean, National Treasure, mm. she she don't need no auto-tune. I mean, come on. No. Karen she has Carpenter. a pure voice. Yes. Very. Sad story, though. Mm-hmm. Very sad. It was sad. And uh, yeah, it, uh, I mean... Donnie and Marie Osmond, so good before a jujitsu match. You know, <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> a little bit country and rock and roll, a little, little bit to get you to, yeah. to realize that you are both and not I mean, either yeah. or. Because jujitsu itself is a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll, is it not? Really, it's a lot of rolling. I can yes, tell you that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. But yeah, I, I think that's a, a good point, though the the thing you mentioned about evolution like i'm that's why the nerves are increased and and one of my pro writers on project echelon which is we have a professional cycling team in the nonprofit that i co-founded he told me once you know pressure is a privilege and mm-hmm. i think that's what it is is i feel pressure no one's pressuring me i feel pressure on myself because i want 
better for my life. I want to perform to the best of my ability. I want to be the best at whatever I'm doing. Like I'm driven to be the best. Yeah. I recognize that's maybe not the reality. That's not the end goal necessarily, but that's the driver. Sure. And so believing that I could be the best on that day out of the four or five people. I mean, I'm not saying in the state of Wisconsin or in the nation, but on that day yeah. that I am the best and mm -hmm. that's a pressure which is a privilege because I'm in a position where I've worked hard to gain that privilege of having the honor of believing in myself enough that I think I can win. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. that brings up emotion, but that I'm happy to have it. Yeah. It's good emotion. I mean, yeah. I mean, emotions are there for a reason. If you're suppressing them, if you're going in like Drago as a robot and just, I must break, I you. Must break you. Yeah. There's no, there's, you know, there's, there's no, uh, there's no real triumph there. You want to go in as Rocky, and if you're getting, you know, beat up the whole time, and then at the end, you know, you get the the <laughs> and you know that that's what you want. So, Rocky Four, everybody, go see Rocky Four. Still the best know. movie of all time. Yes, that is. And then Rocky Five. Ugh. Ugh, no, no, that's rough. Rocky. They, it was bookended by some pretty terrible Rockies. Like yeah. uh, Rocky Three was not great either. Yeah, one, two, four. One, two, mm. four. Yeah, it's yes, definitely. Yep. It could have done without everything else. But what are you going to do? Find the success in the mess, even if it's a, what is it now? Not even a trilogy. It's a sextuplet. I forget yeah, how many they made. Well, yeah, I mean, they've got spinoffs. They've got Creed. They've got all this stuff now. I haven't, yeah. I haven't even dug into that. Stuff. The universe. It's right on par with Fast and Furious. Yes. Yep. So anyway, with, with the uh, conversation wrapping up, I wanted to mention maybe one more thing. Uh, on the lines of this end topic that we were kind of working on, which is the pressure is a privilege. And one of the things that I've learned, you know, about this pressure is that you gain that privilege. You gain the belief in yourself through practice and through making a lot of messes and finding a lot of successes within those messes and, and continuing to come back and, and evolving and, and trying new things and leaving stuff that doesn't work and, and realizing that you're not a failure because this wasn't the thing for you, but it got you to the thing that is the thing. And maybe that ended up not being the thing. And then this is the thing, but you continually try to learn as you go. Mm -hmm. And this is the muscle that we're working and it doesn't matter what it is in, but if you want success, that's the key is to keep coming back and repping and, and trying because if it's even your marriage and you guys are in conflict and you overreact and you know you're the one who overreacts because again, if it takes two to tango, but you can't change anybody else. So you're looking at what you did and what you can do differently as a parent, as a husband, as a wife, as a friend, whatever. When you look at those things, you're going to see them. I see my mistakes, but I still make them. Isn't that weird that I still yeah. make those mistakes? Even though I see that mistake being made, the, the key is, and I tell this to people, you see the mistake, right? Like, yeah, oh, I totally see. I, I missed the cue and I overreacted. I did this thing and oh, I always do it. But you know you always do it. So the success in that is now think back on that situation and, and think about how it could have gone, Yeah, what you could have done differently. And then maybe two or three times from now, you, you catch it before it becomes – explosion, anxiety, anger, rage. And so now I can go into a fight and I can be calm and know that I can catch it because I've practiced enough. I've gone into training enough now where I feel my rage come out and, you know, yeah. someone gets really aggressive with me and I, and I really appreciated it because he's a good friend of mine now, you know, but he was the first person to on an open mat, like come at me hard where I'm like, where I, got like pushed back and I was like, okay, motherfucker. And yeah. then I like went at him. I'm like, we're fighting, you know, we're not really fighting, but it's that fire of competition between us where it was like, oh, it's on, you know, mm -hmm. and it was a really great role. And that was a first time where I safely was able to have that emotion come out Yeah, because I've felt that, but it's not appropriate to get into fights in the middle of some tr parking lot or whatever, like not about it, but. Oh, okay. Noted. Yeah, I know that was a, this is my intervention. Uh, everyone Thanks. come in. Uh, Adam's for, here. <laughs> what, what are we talking about today? Uh, where's the ice cream you promised me, Eric? <laughs> I like to talk about, about how a relationship will change in the following ways unless you get your anger and violence under control. <laughs> uh, this doesn't sound like an ice cream social that I was promised. I'm sorry. Will there even be pizza here? This is not fair. No, oh, I'm going right. to give you a pizza in my mind, though. Ironically, yeah, you made me very angry. <laughs> I think we should step out into the parking lot. 
I see your point. <laughs> Maybe I do need help. <laughs> no, but seriously, that it is a skill and you develop it over time, but you're going to fail at it over and over again. I mean, it's just par for the course. Maybe you won't. And then congratulations, you did it. Like, that's amazing. But you're going to fail at things. You're going to see why. And then you make changes in the future. And that's what I've done for years. You know, 10, 12 years has led up to this moment where I finally feel like I believe in myself. I'm in the best mental health. I'm in the best emotional health. I'm in the best physical shape of my life. And it all starts years ago. That's the end goal, I think, is is truly it's gold medals, whatever, it's Kona, whatever it is, it's finishing an Ironman. But really it's about getting comfortable in your own body and being like, this is an amazing gift that I have, this tool that I get to use. And as long as I can use it, I'm going to, and mm -hmm. I'm going to figure out how to make it last me a hell of a long time. Absolutely. That's uh, it's, it's, that's an absolute true statement. And, and Eric, I'm proud of you for everything that you've done to come to where you're at today from physical, mental, and everything health is those are the, those, even though those, those were, you know, curses in the beginning, they're now your gifts that, that are driving you forward. And I hope everybody gets, I hope everybody's inspired by that from, from Eric's story standpoint, that the challenges that we have, that the, the, the constraints that we have can be our greatest gifts and uh, put us on the cusp of, um, and, and already make us winners. That, that already makes you a winner, Eric, uh, regardless of what happens tomorrow. But uh, tomorrow on the cusp of the day where you go in and, and, and uh, kick, kick the proverbial ass and the literal ass, hopefully. And uh, well, that's, I think that's the exciting part. So yeah, go in there and do your thing, buddy. That's right. It's the victory lap, as, as you told me. Yep. It's the party. It's, it's party time. So yep. all the work goes into this, and then we, we get back at it again and keep going. So, yes, yeah. sir. Thank you for that, and thanks for always being there for me and, and over the years. And, uh, you know, I love being able to celebrate this stuff with you and with my friends, I mean, that's, it's a, it's a close knit group of people in your life that if you're lucky enough to find them, it's not luck. It's, it's, it's looking, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you'll find them. It's just, it might not make sense now, but it will, but you have to keep looking at it yeah. and, and asking the questions and reflecting. And it's not a victimized mindset. It's empowered because you're mm -hmm. looking for a reason of not justifying why you're miserable, but trying to figure out what you can do about it. What's the message? Why is it always this thing? And it's hard. But when you have trusted friends in your life, like an Adam, uh, it's easier to have those conversations because sometimes that's all it is, is verbalizing out loud with someone else you trust to talk yourself into. <laughs> Many times Adam has talked to me and I said nothing. And he's like, oh my God, I'm talking to myself about my own problem, aren't I? And then yes. he finds a solution. Like that's just the beauty of, of trusted friendship. And indeed, yeah, I, I've. I've grown so much in, in throughout the years, just knowing you and everybody else in the communities we have, every, every high achiever that I've ever interviewed, you know, on this, this podcast included means that, that their, uh, that community is, 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 is the best path to, toward success. I mean, truly, I mean, whether you're, whether you're religious or not, or, or believe in any kind of spirituality, the idea that where two or more of us gather, mm -hmm. you know, they're he is in the presence where their God is, or their, 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 uh, the spiritual, our, we transcend our, our, ourselves in those situations. So find yeah. that community. We need it. And we need, it. we need to end the episode so I can go drive to Chicago before the rains come and, uh, get some sleep so I can kick some ass. Make sure you get one of them deep dish pizzas over there. <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> after, 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 okay. Yeah, I don't know I if that's. Just, I can't figure out why I didn't make weight. All I had was an entire deep dish pizza full of salt, cheese, and fat. That was delicious. Oh, don't get me that wrong. Sounds, and then I had a delicious. tummy ache the whole time. I don't know what. <laughs> Again, yeah, that'll be a whole different conversation. Understand yep. what the food's doing for you and why you're having it. That'll be next week. When, when yeah. we tune in next week and we'll find <laughs> out. Not only, yeah, Eric, okay, great. You won the competition, but how is the deep dish pizza? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I won. Yeah. Find this whole new, I wish, I wish so hard for that reality that pizza was somehow my secret sauce, you know, it to is. victory. Yes. And then I will peddle that. <laughs> yeah. There's a movie there. Yeah. The, the, the performance pizza. The performance yep. enhancing pizza. <laughs> Yes, that'd be Peps. That was a whole yeah, brand Peps. from a uh, you know, performance and having. Who knew? Yeah. All right. Secret to success: <laughs> Peps Pizza. All right. Well, <laughs> until next time, journey well, my friends, and as always, bye y'all, bye y'all. <laughs>